One of the emerging realities of a post-pandemic global economy is the growing expectation that business operations will be radically diversified to ensure the health and physical well-being of individuals. This new normal will likely make it imperative for businesses to operate mostly with a remote workforce. We'll be going through all of this with Oreolu Ababoye, Chief Operating Officer, Jobaman, Nigeria. Baboye, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Oreolu Ababoye. Are you with us? Thank you for joining us this morning on The Morning Show. Good morning. Yes, I'm with you. Good morning. Great. Good morning. We can hear you loud and clear. Now, I mean, okay, we're facing uh, a new reality, and businesses are having to uh, adjust, to reinvent, to reshape their yeah. businesses. And one of the uh, things that people have been talking about is that employees are being advised to work from home in many uh, businesses. But this is something that is unfamiliar to many workers and, uh, you know, many businesses having a remote workforce. Uh, how can organizations ensure business uh, continuity with a remote workforce? Uh, thank you so much. Um, well, so the first thing um, I think we need to understand is that um, this is this is going to this kind of normal or this um, reality that we have right now will most likely change the way we work forever. Um, so it's most likely not going to be just for this situation, but um, we actually have a situation that um, companies would then see the reality of running uh, a, work, a remote workforce effectively and efficiently. So it's a new normal, um, and I think um, yeah, businesses should um, um, start to embrace this um, really fully. Now, to your question about um, how uh, businesses can um, ensure that, um, uh, uh, can ensure business con continuity from their workforce. Uh, well, the first thing is this, empower your team. Um, it is very, very important that you empower your team. Um, and what I mean by empower, empowering them is, first of all, let them understand the absolute situation of things, um, which would require you having lots and lots of town hall meetings, you know, to let them know how much this has impacted um, your business as a business leader. Then the next thing for you would be to get your, um, your staff members the right hardware, the right software, um, the right tools needed for them to function efficiently yeah, in, in their uh, remote work. Um, also, um, provide um, amenities if it's possible um, to give them uh, um, you know, allowances for data for them to be able to um, connect and work remotely. That would be great. But the most important thing or what encapsulates all of it is you empowering your team as a business leader. Well, thank you for that. And certainly you've pointed out some very important things. This is a new normal that we all have to adopt to. For example, Twitter's uh, CEO, Jack Dorsey, has said that going forward, employers don't even have to come in anymore and can actually choose to work at home. But in order to ensure business continuity, some organizations uh, still need to perform tasks such as hiring. So what tools would you say are available to employers that, can, uh, that they have to adopt or can adopt to take advantage of remote hiring right now? Yeah, so... Um, right now, um, software is beginning to take a bigger role in sourcing and, uh, and hiring. Um, actually, a 2015 study shows that around 72% of employers predicted that their element of talent acquisition would be automated. This was far back as 2015. So um, I think the um, recruitment um, industry or the recruitment space is sort of um, already in the right direction um, for this situation. Um, so what, what we now start to see is a much uh, better adoption of um, um, softwares and um, uh, recruitment automation. And ways by which we can do that, ways by which recruitment automation can happen would be, you know, use of job boards. Uh, we already we have um, quite a number of them. Jobberman is a job board, for instance. Uh, Jobberman, for instance, has been in existence for over 10 years. Uh, and so um, we what we expect to see would be, you know, better adoption of that kind of city, uh, of that kind of platform. Um, secondly, would be for um, recruiters to engage applicant tracking systems that can help them um, properly track applications, track interviews, track engagement with candidates, track the candidates where the, you know, they hired, um, and you know, just a, a robust system that can ensure that um, seamless um, um, sourcing and onboarding process. And finally, 
um, conduct online assessment. Um, it means that what we will start to see would be um, um, companies moving away from the traditional way of um, testing candidates, um, would com companies will move away from the traditional way of interviews. Um, interviews will then become um, uh, online. Um, people will tend to have to, to maybe send video um, CVs if possible, or probably um, a, a dialing interview instead of physical interview. So all of these are things that we'll, we'll start to see, and all of these are, are uh, um, uh, things that hiring man managers can actually use to ensure that um, balls are not dropped um, during this um, uh, pandemic. Well, I mean, uh, there's something I would like you to clarify for us. Remote work is different from location work. Why white-collar workers uh, can work uh, from a remote location? Blue-collar workers may find that a bit difficult, particularly persons who are involved in the subsistence work, in, particularly in the informal sector or in the construction sector. Now, how would persons who fall into that category, how would they adapt? Or they are likely to become victims uh, in a precarious uh, world of work that we imagine will emerge in the future? Yes, so unfortunately, there, there are certain realities that we cannot run away from. Um, one of such would be um, um, roles or jobs that involves a lot of contact. Um, now, because of because of the situation we are in, because of COVID, um, we would start to see um, serious pre precautions um, in in that particular field of work. But as an employer, I think the first and the most important thing is for you to ensure your employee safety. Um, very, very. This is very, very important. And which would which would require that you um, follow all the health guidelines in place. You know the social distancing, the face mask, because you, these people will not cannot deliver remotely. They have to be on site. They have to be at their workplace for them to work. Um, so the best you can do is to ensure their safety. Um, the second thing is also to make, to ensure that you you maintain regular communication with them. Always ensure that you've got their back. Always ensure that you um, you know exactly what is going on with them, and and this also ties back into you know employee safety. The biggest thing right now, the most important thing right now, is safety of everybody. Um, when we are safe, then would have uh, would have peace of mind to be able to deliver our services. So yes, I agree that um, there there would be a serious. Um, probably short demand or less demand um, on those kind of um, 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 roles or on those type of jobs. But um, I guess we can we can get to a place of comfort if we can ensure that the employees are safe and then the people they are interacting with, the, the customers, the clients are also safe. Certainly, ensuring the safety of your employees has to top your list. And in times of crises such as this, many businesses are challenged to support employees while delivering on the needed services that they have to, to keep their businesses operational. So I wanted to ask you how human resource professionals can help businesses uh, to manage themselves through this crisis or manage that particular situation. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so... It still ties back to um, to what to what I said um, about um, um, letting the employers know or the employees, I mean, know that um, you've got their back. Um, the the most important everyone is in fear. Everyone is scared right now. So as an HR professional um, in a in a particular company, the best thing you can do is to ensure and let the um, your employees know that you've got their back. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing is assurance of job security. This is also very, very important. Everybody is on the edge. People don't know what's going to happen. Um, so it's important that you ensure um, your, your, your employees that, look, if you're delivering on, your, on some certain things, probably you need to reevaluate what delivery would be per employee. And you agree, and then you say, if you're, if you're delivering on these things, um, your job is still very secure. Um, then another thing is, of course, you know, regular communications important. Important that you get employee feedback. Transparency. Transparency is the biggest thing. You know, as a company, it's important that you're transparent with your employees. Let them know the situation of things. Let them know the situation of company finances, if possible, so that they can they can adjust. Um, if there is a need for them to, to uh, you know, to to paint that picture so that they can also empathize with the business to understand that these are the situation of things. It's not that we are being wicked, but this is what it is at the moment. And trust me, employees, we understand. 
Um, so it is important that absolute transparency is in play. Um, so these are ways um, an HR professional can, can can ensure that employees are performing up to par. Look, these employees are they already they know what they sign up for. They already they have an idea of what they are supposed to deliver. But what they need to have from you as an employer is that assurance that you've got their back. Is the assurance that their their job is secure, irrespective of whatever happens. Well, uh, uh, Boboye, let's talk about culture, tradition, identity, brand. Uh, all of these are relevant uh, inputs into the ecosystem of business. But now that businesses will have to respond to the disruption that we have seen as a result of uh, COVID-19, how do they retain some of those essential things that are important to the history and the tradition of the uh, business while adjusting? How do they go about that? What kind of advice will you give them? But maybe we should take a short break before you respond to that. And then when we return, the conversation will continue. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Still with us is uh, Oreolua Boboye, Chief Executive Officer, Jobberman Nigeria, who has been helping us to analyze the future of work and how businesses can adapt to the new normal in the face of uh, COVID-19 both now and thereafter. Now, Orelu Wababoye, before we went on break, I had asked you about how businesses in the process of adjusting and transforming to new realities can also still keep components of their past that they may not want to lose completely. Yes, so um, I think the first thing a business needs to do is re-evaluation, proper, proper re-evaluation. Um, and this will allow you and help um, as a business to know what is most important, what is priority um, to your business. It's also, it's um, that evaluation would actually make you realize some things, um, that it is possible that some certain, situ um, some certain traditions that you have decided to keep in the business uh, might be probably the reason why this business had not scaled in a long time. Um, so the truth is some things would go forever. Some traditions would disappear um, simply because we need to adjust to certain realities. And look, cultures and, and tradition, uh, we, we come by all these things out of our, our reactions as human beings to, um, to our environment, right? We'll behave in a certain way simply because our environment has conditioned us to, to behave in that manner. Um, so that means that what, now that we're having new realities even in our environment, then it means that old cultures would have to go um, some old cultures we have to go, we would need to build new cultures. Um, so the first thing is re-evaluation, really, really important. And after that re-evaluation, re then you now start to ask yourself, how do I improve my return on investment? How do I deliver on price and quality? How do I invest in new audiences? How do I pivot my business model? How do I ensure long-term survival? Because what is important is the survival of your business. And whatever you need to do to ensure that that business survives and keeps delivering services and keep to your staff members, um, that is the most important to you. I think at that point, culture might become secondary, unfortunately. Um, but then, of course, the, there are cultures that you can still retain, but they will only stay because they are still relevant in the current normal. Certainly. And to be very honest with you, I mean, many companies in Nigeria really haven't invested in new technologies that they need to modernize their business services. And it's time to do so. It's time to overcome the eye service that we see everywhere. And there must be certain businesses and sectors out there that you can maybe help us to point out that you feel don't really need to require the physical presence of their staff going forward. What sectors or what businesses would this apply to? Um, of course. Um, so first and first and foremost, right? Um, I think um, recruitment, for instance. Um, so I, I and interestingly, I actually work. In, I, I am in the recruitment space. So um, and I've seen I've seen a lot of things um, in in the past um, two months that I realized that look, probably we don't need to um, to be physically present to do this certain to perform this certain operation. Um, you know, um, uh, and this cuts across all industries, really. So, um, not, uh, not um, there are some that are more in, um, affected than the others. 
Um, but then I, I see probably a situation where people that um, that uh, organize conferences, conference organizers, you know, they will start to instead of probably having um, um, maybe thousands and thousands of people flock together in a in a in a in a uh, in a location, probably they now start to employ the use of um, you know teleconferencing. Um, I see um, you know media advertising media also change it. Um, there will be a very um, huge influx into digital media and digital advertising more than the um, billboard advertising because most likely maybe people people would move around less and they see the billboards less um, um, and and so on and so forth. Look, all industries will be affected one way or the other. Um, it might not it might not mean um, a total turnaround or a total change um, in in um, in the way we do business, but certainly. For sure, we'll see um, um, we'll see some 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 changes across all the industries. Well, I'd like to um, you know follow up on the question asked by uh, Leila and to vary it this way, because in terms of business growth, we've seen new realities also. Now, in what particular areas do you imagine that there will be more growth in the future? In other words, what is described as the jobs of tomorrow? Which sectors do you think will witness? Uh, would uh, you know experience uh, better growth compared to others? Thank you. So the, the first would be uh, technology. Um, why? Because uh, right now businesses are beginning to see um, the the need to um, to have some certain technology to function properly. So um, you see um, um, roles like software developers. Um, you see roles like infrastructure managers. Um, you see roles like network administrators um, start to go on the high demand um, because companies are now uh, beginning to um, um, digitally transform or, or ensure technology transformation um, in you know in their different uh, business units. Um, now, with that, this will pose a new challenge, and which is um, cybersecurity. Uh, because a lot of uh, business activities will now start to happen online, then we start to see um, reasons for, for us to have proper um, security um, online. Uh, so therefore, there will also be rising demand on, um, on the cybersecurity experts. Um, then also, um, of course, health workers, um, this is very, very important. They, they are very, very important right now. Um, so we we'll, um, we'll continue to see the rise in demand for, for, for people in the, in the health sector. Um, yeah, so those are the, those are the two um, um, in, um, sectors that I see a very, very huge um, um, change in the, in the demand for roles. Thank you for that. And now for you to give us some advice or for you to give our viewers some advice, it's predicted that over 20 million jobs are going to be lost across Africa due to the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, here in Nigeria, we're going to feel the biggest uh, bit of that. So what advice do you have for people that have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 or are going to possibly lose their jobs as we try and battle this pandemic? Yeah, so I think the first thing for um, for an employee or a job seeker would be to upskill yourself. Um, first off, is to do um, um, a, like a trend analysis and you know be in the news, understand the trend of things, know where the demand is, upskill yourself, um, upskill yourself, skills, um, soft skills, you know, add skills, um, um, get on, get on um, making yourself more relevant even in your in your current workplace because at the end of the day what what will ensure um, job security is relevance to your business absolute relevance to your business so maybe what you're doing right now is not um, if you if you do a quick evaluation of the past one month or two months in your business if you're still employed and you realize that um, what you're doing is not um, into the core of the business this is a time for you to reevaluate your career and ask yourself if you still want to remain in that business, what can I do to ensure my relevance, to ensure that I am still relevant in this particular workspace? And if you are probably now thinking of new frontiers, then this is the time to take up new skills. This is the time to learn new things. This is the time to take that certification that will ensure, um, you know, uh, that will ensure your next job. Well, quickly, is there any role for government in all of this? And what should that role be? 
Yeah, so I think I think um, so. The most important thing um, for us, uh, or for that, I believe we need from government as individuals, not even maybe not companies at the moment, but as individuals, is um, stability. Um, the reason why we have um, you know different reactions to what is happening right now is because there is a huge lack of trust. You know, um, so if it is if there is if the government can really work on that, where the citizenry can absolutely trust the government on their deliveries um you know so that it is possible for government to roll out things it's possible for government to roll out the initiatives um but the moment the citizen starts to second guess whatever they are doing it becomes a problem so i think the most important thing for, for that we need from government right now is trust we need to get the government needs to get to a place where the citizens can absolutely trust Right, the fact that okay, whatever they are rolling out, whatever palliative it is, whatever help, whatever um, you know, uh, central bank uh, um, decisions, whatever it is, it is one in the best interest of everybody, and they need to ensure that trust. Well, thank you very much, Aurelu Abagoya, for joining us this morning on the morning show to discuss business continuity in the workforce going forward.